Hello everyone, on today's video uh, we're going to be continuing our little China versus Vietnam scenario. Uh, the focus for today is going to be on using a little bit of Lua in order to make things a little bit more challenging for the Chinese. And we're also going to be exploring, you know, kind of giving this a quick little test run to see how well it works, as well as coming up with some just sort of general little ways to kind of avoid the cheap shots that the uh, players will most likely take. And again, every player is a little bit different and some people have, you know, I don't want to call it self-control, but doctrinal control, if you want to think about it another way, to avoid some of the cheap shots. But sometimes we as a designers have to take the time to kind of put them in as well. So uh, first things first, let's go ahead and establish our little civilian shipping. Now there's a couple different philosophies when it comes to setting up our civilian shipping here. Uh, the first thing we could do is we could go manually go in here and dial the uh, civilian shipping in, then we could set up a big mission for the civil units and basically have them zipping around back and forth, kind of causing all sorts of trouble. Uh, the other method I've seen people use is what they'll actually do is they'll create some ports that are kind of far apart from each other. And what they'll do is they'll have the civilian ships basically alternate back and forth. Uh, this is an excellent system and it creates that kind of shipping kind of traffic in and out. But keep in mind, this is only a 12 hour scenario. You know, 12 hours, if you're doing 10 knots, is a surprise, that's only 120 knots, a nautical mile. So if you're coming out of Haiphong here, that's how far you can get in the entire length of the scenario, which isn't that far. So taking the time to put in all sophisticated, complicated ports all the way out here and having civilian ships zip back, zack back and forth is really not going to do anything for us. It's just going to add another layer of complexity. However, simulating sh uh, fishing traffic is uh, going to be something we absolutely must do in order to make things, like I said, a little more interesting for us. So the first things first, um, to do this, we're going to use some Lua because I, you know, Lua is just going to be the quickest and easiest way to do this. So what I'm interested in doing is calculating where everything is going to be. Now, now, in my mind, we're going to have kind of a region again. I'm going to go ahead and create, no, control right click real quick here. And I'm going to go ahead and create a general region for this angry traffic to be operating from. I'll make it fairly large. All right, this looks pretty good here. Obviously, we have some of our region uh, zinging into here, so I'm actually going to go drag this point to here real fast. And we'll go ahead and grab this point, and we'll go ahead and put this one here as well. So this is going to be our fishing region, if you want to think about it, our civilian traffic zone. So the upper left corner here, I'm just going to make a quick little note here, is a 20, whoa, that's not a note, that's a calculator. Man, is that force a habit. <laughs> when you do it as many times, you'll understand. So uh, 20 uh, degrees, 56 and 36 inches. <laughs> it's not inches, I know. And we're also going to say this is north. And then we're going to do north. Uh, we're going to, oh, I'm sorry. That was north. East 106, uh, 46 and 22 inches. I know it's not inches. I know it's minutes and seconds. All right. So this is going to be your upper left coordinate of our zone. We're going to have to convert that uh, coordinate, as you'll see in a minute. Coming down here, we have our bottom right one. Let's go ahead and hold my mouse over that as well. We should make a little note, bottom right is going to be north 12, uh, and then we got 08 and 15, and then of course we also have east 111, we're going to do 57 and 26 inches. It's not inches, it's minutes, it's seconds. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> so basically we know this is going to be the general area that we're going to be wanting to populate the fishing traffic. Now we can come in here and actually populate the fishing traffic completely by hand if we want, or we can apply a little bit of magic, which is what I was saying we're going to do earlier. Let's head over to the Lua script console and uh, start playing around with this. So first things first, uh, whenever you're generating units in Lua, there's something you want to keep in the back of your head here. And that's the fact that every single time that I do this, you're going to go ahead and create a new generation of units. Now, some people are like, well, that's not a problem. That's well, why, why would that be an issue? Well, the reason it's going to be an issue is going to be on account of the fact that if you try to uh, generate all your units and then use a trigger to generate more units, you end up doubling the total number of units that you have on your map. Now, some people are like, oh, this isn't a problem, but just have lots of units. Well, the problem is you as the scenario designer are going to be sitting here for a week and a half deleting all the little civilian ships that we created. So the best strategy, and I love this strategy, I picked this one up actually from another designer there, um, this one again, is to actually generate all the ships first, and then every time you run the scenario, move the ships. Now you're sitting there going, well, that makes sense, because then every time you run the scenario, you get a different position, but you have the same ships. Exactly. So um, we can either come now in here and go ahead and populate all of our ships. But like I said, I'm too lazy for that. So let's go ahead and do it the old fashioned way. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to create myself a quick little for loop here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and say what we're going to be using for our for loop here. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this. Uh, this is the, kind of the old school method. I wish I could make this bigger. I'm sorry. Uh, so normally we're just going to say a variable name. So I'm an old school person. I always said for X. And then we're going to go ahead and say what we're going to be going up to. So, um, you know, if we want to go, um, for example, we want to stop at the number 10, we can do this. And then we simply type in the word do. If you want to be a little more specific, you can actually put a comma there to say what you're basically increasing by, in this case, 1. So if we start at 1 and go to 10, we're going to end up at 9. So we'll go ahead and kick this up to 11 real quick. Do, and when we're done with our little for loop, we're just going to go type in the word end. Now, what I always like to do is I like to kind of test things out. 
So I'll quickly print X. Oh man, this feels so naughty. I, you know, I come from Python and C. And you can see we actually got up to the number of 11, which gave us exactly what we want. But I'm a little more old fashioned here. So I'm actually gonna go boop like that. And now we get zero through 10. Again, if I want a one through 10, I think you get the idea. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and use this loop to generate units in this area. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to generate some um, interesting little items as far as you know longitude, latitude, stuff like that. Now, some people uh, go very, very dynamic as far as this goes. So there's three or four different uh, DBIDs for different types of ships. I'm a huge fan of that particular method. Uh, one technique that I saw people use is they'll actually use a list and they'll pull things out of the list depending on where they want to be inside of that list. Both techniques are absolutely wonderful depending on what you're trying to achieve. We're going to keep it a little bit old school here. So I'm going to go ahead and say, um, uh, we'll call create a local variable. It's actually a local list. And we'll go ahead and call this, um, let's just think here. Um, we'll call civil civil ships. And we'll go ahead and make that nice and blank for now. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that one real fast. I just want to check something. Yeah, I was right. <laughs> Again, I had a Python moment for a second there. So we don't know what the DBIDs are going to be. So we're going to go look that up. I'll create this as a blank one for now. So I'm going to go up to uh, Database Viewer. I'm going to go ahead and pick a quick little poke here. This works, by the way, with civilian aircraft, too, if you really want to make a scenario modern and complicated. So I'll go ahead and say ship. Go ahead and come down here. I'll type in commercial. And uh, let's see what we have as far as different units goes. So we have some cruise liners. Oh, boy. Those are the kind of nasty targets. Um, actually, I'm liking the cruise liner idea. Mm, I, mm, eh, this, mm, I hate the idea of accidentally hitting a cruise liner. So let's put that one in here. So let's see, the DB idea is 2024. I like that. Let's go ahead and get ourselves something else here. We got a bulk a ferry. Oh, yeah, there definitely be ferries. Let's go ahead and get one of those. Uh, that's going to be uh, DB idea 2025. Uh, let's see what other poor things we can destroy here. Oh, we have a couple different flavors of fishing boats here. So let's see, we have uh, number 16. I like how it's the 16th entry in the database. And then what do we have for the slightly bigger one? Is uh, tree 28. Boop, boop, boop. Man, that looks pretty good. Let's see if there's anything else in here that'd be like, oh yeah, let's get one of those too. Uh, let's see, mm, I was hoping for something. Oh, a supply vessel, those are pretty small. I don't think we really need one of those. Oh, look at this, a commercial trawler. Ooh, that's irritating. Two, three, five, seven, two, three, five, seven. Nice, uh, let's see what else we can do here. Uh, platforms, yes, because I want to randomly create those. Let's also go ahead and throw in some commercial tugboats too, just to make things interesting. And I'm going to go pop over to civilian real quickly and see if there's anything kind of fun to play with. Let's see, low profile vessel, a narco submarine. I love how they call them low profile vessels. That's just fun. Let's see, we have some sailboats. Oh, we'll mix things up a little bit here. I'll throw in some civilian sailboats to make things nice and irritating for our folks. Oh, let's see here. We have, oh, look at that's a nice, oh man, that's a big boat. That's nice. Uh, we also have a high speed one that looks pretty good. We have an RHIB. Uh, we could throw in, oh, look at this, a motor. Oh, that's nice too. Let's throw in a couple of those again. Just making this list nice and beefy in order to make it nice and complicated for us. And let's see here. I don't want to put in a rib. That doesn't make that doesn't make any sense to me. Life raft. Uh, I'm not going to put any life rafts as well. Okay, so that gives us a list of tons of different options that we can now use for this. Now, the great thing is this list we can keep adding to and go ahead and build a system that can actually select from this list. So let's go ahead and play with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and develop a random number, local random ship. So then I'm going to go ahead and say uh, math dot random. I'm going to make sure my math is right here. Yep, that was right. I almost had, like I said, another Python moment. So math.random is super easy. If I want a number between zero and something, you just come in here and type in like this. So in this case, I want between zero, which is the first item in any list, and how long the list is. So let's go ahead and uh, print that just to make sure that works. Again, you always want to be printing things as you're doing them because you don't want anything weird to happen here. Let's go ahead and hit run, see what happens. And we got ourselves a big angry message. All right, that was, like I said, I, I have to teach Python, so sometimes I get myself confused. Sorry. So it's going to be hashtag civil ships. So what this should do is should get us a random number between zero and the number of civil ships that we have. So now if I press run, you can see it's going to give me a random collection of numbers based on how many items I have inside this uh, little list that I've created here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select one of these ships and uh, go ahead and make sure it works okay. So I'm actually going to come in here and say print a random ship of, uh, actually random ship, print me civil ships of random ship. Let's see how this works. Yeah, there it is. So now we have a beautiful collection of database IDs that are randomly selected from our civil ships list. This is again, a really, really solid method in order to do this. Some people can actually expand this down out the, around the corner. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create ourselves a random latitude and longitude. So if you remember a little while ago, I took a couple moments to go ahead and uh, set myself up with a random latitude and longitude, or well, not random. But the problem is these coordinates do, 
excuse me, these coordinates do not work properly for what we're trying to do here. Um, these particular ones, the way that we have it set up right now is basically going to be in this technique. We need to convert this into decimal coordinates. So the easiest way to do that, let me go ahead and get a thing for it real quick. It's just to poke around online and find something that can convert from DMS to a decimal degrees. So let's go ahead and do a DMS, which is degrees, minutes, seconds, latitude. And we'll go ahead and get our little handy dandy list here, the ones we had. And we just go ahead and dial it all in. So remember, north is positive, east is positive. So we're going to go ahead and say a latitude is like a ladder. So we're going to north, 56, 36. And now we're going to say, again, this number is going to be positive 106, 46, 22. So we're going to go ahead and convert this to decimal, and this gives us our latitude and longitude numbers, which is exactly what we're going to need to have here. So we're going to say this one, we're going to say this one, come on down here, and now you can see we're in good shape as far as these two numbers. We'll go ahead and do this conversion as well. We're going to say a 1208.15, and we're also going to say 1115726. Go ahead and convert that to decimal as well. We're going to need both sets. And we are looking awesome. So again, we don't need nearly that many decimals for what we're doing right here. Go ahead and knock those off, because again, that's not going to do anything for us anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and make myself a quick little note. Looks good, looks good, looks good. All right, cool. So now let's go ahead and bring this information over here. So we're going to go ahead and generate a couple random numbers. Now here's where people get themselves in trouble. So now if we create this as a local variable, I've got bad news for you. The problem we're going to have is if we create it as a local and we try to use it inside the scope of the loop that we can use to check for things, we're going to run into an infinite loop very, very quickly. This is kind of a Lua thing that you got to kind of watch out for. Uh, it happens to absolutely everybody, so be very, very cautious with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create this as a regular variable. So we're going to call this uh, lat a random. Just keep it nice and simple. We're going to say math.random. And here is where we are going to get in trouble. Um, we need to now think about what two ranges we're going to use here. So if you remember, we took all the time to get ourselves a random latitude, 2094 to 12.13. So we can say uh, 12.13 to 20. Let's go take a look at this one more time. To uh, 2094. The problem is this function only takes integers. So if we ask it for this range, we're not going to end up with this range. What we're going to end up with instead is we're going to end up with something that's going to be between 12 and 20, which doesn't work for us at all. So the trick here is to actually go ahead and knock this uh, zero um, decimal point out and then divide it later on by the value of that particular amount that you knocked the decimal over. In this case, we're going to get ourselves a nice little decimal number. So we'll go ahead and say long random as well. We'll do the exact same technique we used a minute ago. Uh, let's go take a look at what we had for values here. This is going to be, I'm just going to drag this up here so it's easier to see. Uh, 106, actually, I'm sorry, it's going to be 106.77 by 111.9 uh, or 5. And again, we're going to use the same technique here. We're just going to get rid of that decimal point. And we're moving the decimal point over twice, if you want to think about it another way. And dividing it, which should get us a nice uh, random number. So let's go ahead and make sure this works correctly. Uh, let's say lat random, long random, and let's see if that works. Ah, let's see here. Where did I, I forgot the parenthesis. You'll do that a million times too, so don't sweat it. Look at this. Now we have ourselves these beautifully, beautifully, beautifully random numbers. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put a space between them just for the purposes of testing. Nice. Look at those beautiful, beautiful latitudes and longitudes. Okay, so the next problem we're going to have here is um, we're going to generate all these ships. However, you're going to hit a point where uh, some of those ships are going to end up on land because uh, mathematically you might end up on this particular island. Now, everybody's got a different way to solve this problem. Now, the standard technique, of course, is to go ahead and build a quick little loop that says, am I in water? No, give me new numbers. So we use that technique. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create something called elevation. And I'm going to set the elevation to uh, just one. That works fine. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create myself a while loop here. And all I'm going to say inside that while loop is while the elevation is uh, less, is greater than zero, that simply means you're on land, which means we need to find ourselves a new coordinate. So I'm going to come right on down here. Whoop. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to go right here. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. While my elevation is greater than or equal to zero. So then all we're going to do is we're going to keep looping here until we can find ourselves coordinates that go ahead and match that criterion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these two that we had a little earlier. I'm going to shove them into here. Go ahead and back that space up a little bit. Back that space up. Some people point out the fact that there's nothing stopping me from setting both of these values to zero. I absolutely could do that. Again, I'm just con considering scope. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to type in elevation 
elevation equals, now there's a great tool built into command that actually will tell you the elevation of whatever particular position that you are. You know, it's basically called world get elevation. It's actually pretty cool how it works. I'm gonna come down here, I'm saving world get elevation. Let's copy paste that right off there. And you're just gonna dial in the particular location. Now, unfortunately, this is a little annoying because it's gonna be looking for a point. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it super simple. I'm gonna say latitude equals lat random. Longitude equals long random. Let's go ahead and hit run and see what happens. It should blow up on us. It says equals, and that's going to be line 14. 90% uh, of the time, that usually means that I forgot. Uh, right parenthesis expected. Let's go ahead and see if I can find uh, where my mystery one is. I believe this one is actually fairly accurate. So let me go check something real fast. Ah, indeed. So the documentation wasn't complete. It, uh, so it did not call for a list. So what I did is I just put this uh, little curly brackets around it to make this an actual point, which is a list of two coordinates. That was my bad. Okay, so what this does now is it basically says, if the elevation is bigger than zero, find me a new elevation. Uh, that's a really, really effective technique because I can actually come here up here and say, let's make it deep water only and do something like 50 meters, which now means unless the water is 50 meters deep, then it will not be able to go ahead and find that exact point, which is, like I said, that's a pretty solid way to do it. Um, so we've got that. So as long as the elevation is that correct depth, it should generate a coordinate that will put our ship in a nice safe spot. So the only thing we have left to do now is to go ahead and actually make the object. Now, anybody who's familiar with Add Unit, obviously, I'm a huge fan of Add Unit. I've used it, I don't know, a bajillion times. <laughs> I've made entire scenarios randomly with this. Command for that is super simple. I'm just going to do send edit. I'm going to say add units. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and send myself a little list here. Everybody's a little different with lists. Uh, some people like to do the you know name equals whatever, and then they'll go right down the side or something along those lines. That's a great technique. Um, I'm a little too old-fashioned for that, unfortunately, and I have to put it all on the same line. I know it's wrong. I know it's wrong. All right, first things first, we're going to type in type. It is a ship. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to give it a name. So we're going to call it a uh, civil vessel. I'll go ahead and get a random number. Why not? Local random number equal, whoa, <laughs> is that the British version of numbers? Uh, random dot, uh, let's see, here we go. oh, sorry, math.random, math.random, um, we'll make it a really, really big number. We'll do 1,000 through 9999. And we'll say civil vessel dot dot random number, just to confuse the user as much as possible, comma. So now we're going to go ahead and say what its loadout is. We don't have a loadout, but we do have a DBID. So let's go ahead and get a local random heading. We'll go ahead and get that too. Math.random, it's gonna be between zero and 360. Like it. So we're gonna say heading equals random heading, comma. Now we're gonna go ahead and say DBID equals, remember how we did this already? We're gonna do civil ships of, remember our random ship? Now we have a randomly selected, I'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so you all can see it. Of course, I wish I could actually zoom in so you could actually see it, but again, we'll have to kind of work with what we got here. So next thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and define what side it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit a comma here. I always feel like when I press a comma, I have to twist my finger on the comma key in order to bend the period. You know it goes. So I'm gonna say side equals uh, N-E-U-T-R-L, which is the name of our side, comma. We're gonna say our latitude equals our lat random. Our longitude equals our long random. Remember how we did all this a minute ago? I told you it was gonna be worth it comma. Now, of course, we're going to define the altitude, which we're not dealing with a submarine here, so we don't have to worry about the submarine. Uh, we can also decide whether or not we want to tell it to hold fire. We can decide to set it its proficiency. We can do things like, you know, program, you know, what is its initial speed? You know, what is its manual throttle? But we actually don't need to do any of that because we're dealing with a ship here. So now I go ahead and I'll set this, and now I have myself a successful little piece. All right, stand by for the lag. I always like to copy paste this in case something blows up on me because I've done it more than once. Boop! Uh-oh, missing DBID. Interesting. So why did it do that? Well, the reason it did that to us is on account of the fact that our length function is one too long. We have to actually subtract one from our length when we make our random ships here. Because if you remember, the last item is actually one item past the end of the list. So let me go ahead and delete all these beautiful ships you just generated. Try again. Boop. Uh-oh, missing DBID. So I really wish I knew which one of the items it was. Uh, item, oh, it went off the front of the list. Ah, sometimes you just cannot win with these sort of things. So be very, very cautious with this. So again, the reason we're missing our DBID here is because when it randomly generated a number, it generated a number off the end of our list. So when it made this group of beautiful, look at how tight this one is. Wow, that's a nasty place for that simple vessel right there. Also, I'm not thrilled with the digits there at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that real quick. 
So civil ship, I'll random ship again because it's going to be one more. So the way we can get around this, of course, is where we could go ahead and say that, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know, we could come in here and do something like this as well. Uh, actually, we drop this down by one. And let's give it another shot. And it looks like we're in good shape again. So again, be very cautious with that because like you said, you just saw this classic trap that I fell into from a programmer's perspective. So now we have a group of uh, randomly generated civil vessels. Unfortunately, I don't like any of those because of that stupid space with that random number. Let's go ahead and fix that up real quick. Uh, we're going to put a space right here. And oh, I pressed the insert key. Everybody loves the insert key, especially if you're on a laptop. Missing DBID. Hmm. So where did we go off the end of the list here? Let's, let's start with one in Lua, do they? I would be very, very surprised, although that's definitely something I would do. Hmm, I'm about to learn something right here. And of course, the folks at home have been yelling at me probably for 25 minutes saying, hey, you could have fixed that a while ago. Why didn't you just catch that? Hey, you learn something new every time. So now we have a group of uh, randomly generated ships. As a matter of fact, if I press O, you can see that I have this beautiful little collection of just random everythings. And they all have, of course, unique positions. Now, this is pretty cool and everything, but there's not really a lot of them, especially going to delete those. And uh, we're going to make this a little more exciting. Hachoo! <laughs> now that is what I call a group of random civilian ships. If that doesn't irritate every game or a game user ever, I don't know what will. So now this is our group of angry ships that's going to irritate our players this entire scenario. But we're not quite done yet. Uh, what we need to do now is now we need to come up with a way to take all these random ships and we need to actually get them moving around to be nice and irritating. So the safest thing you can do is basically grab all those ships and add them to a random sea control mission. I love doing that strategy. I'm not going to get complicated and give them random courses. I've seen people do that too. That's effective, but it's just so much simpler and more random if you do it the other way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'll go up to Mission Editor. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and create. Well, I've got to create a new mission first. Uh, be annoying. I know I've created this mission about a thousand times, but it's awesome every single time I do it. We'll call it Sea Control Patrol. Press OK. And we're going to go ahead and add uh, Todos. Boop. Ha ha, look at that. I'm going to shut all these off because we don't need any of these things. Remember, these guys can't see anyway. Uh, transit throttle is cruise. Station throttle is cruise. Cruise. That way they're nice and annoying. So I'm going to go ahead and close that real quickly. And now we have this gigantic army of ships that are going to be tremendously annoying. However, let's go ahead and save our scenario real quick in case things go wrong here real fast. Our uh, bigger problem here now is the fact that now that we've got all these ships and they're going to be random, they're going to be predictably random. So we need to come up with a way to kind of mix this up. I bet you there's a civilian yacht like all the way out here somewhere. Oh, that would have been so much fun if it was just like a sailboat just sort of like chilling 600 miles off the shore. <laughs> That'd be so irritating. So uh, basically what we're going to do now is we're going to come up with a way to jitter everybody here. So now that we've generated our ships, and um, I wish I could copy paste this so you all could see this a little bit better for those of you who want to steal it from me. Uh, maybe I can do you a quick little favor real fast though. Let me do one of these. Or let me grab that for you real fast. There you go. So anybody who needs to kind of steal that, um, I'll just uh, kind of scroll nice and slowly here. Do one of these sort of things like that. And then if you need to pause me or something along those lines, you can always pause and take a look. Okay, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and jitter their positions. Uh, this is uh, tremendously useful here. So I'm going to say local civil ships again, but this time I'm going to do VP git side. And I'm going to go ahead and say side equals, uh, we're going to do neutral. And we're also going to say dot units. Whoops, of course, if you remember the rest of that quote, you'll actually uh, get yourself out of trouble here. Uh, let's see here. I bet you I forgot this part. Oh, let's see, get side, get side. I believe I actually, oh, I never actually printed them out. <laughs> so let's get a, ca a count of how many there are. Hashtag civil ships, all right. I just wanted to go ahead and see how many there are. 100, yes, it works. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another loop. I'll do KV in I pair. A civil ships do. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, go through each item in civil ships and keep track of that item. So the item itself is going to be this one, and that one's going to be our iterator as well. So just again, make sure everything's working. I'll just print K just as a demonstration so you can kind of understand what it's doing here. Perfect. So it, that's my iterator, and my V is going to be the actual ship. So you can see here, for example, if I wanted to get the name of each one of these ships, I could do V.GOID, 
and whoosh, you can see that I have my GUID of each one of these ships clearly labeled, ready to go. So what we're going to use is we're going to use the set unit command. Now the set unit command is exactly the same thing as the add unit command. The great thing about it is all you have to do is you have to just type in exactly what you want it to do in order to basically move a unit around. You don't have to be as specific. I'm actually going to borrow my code from before because I'm too lazy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and clean this all out real quick. We're going to go ahead and get our random numbers again. So I'm just going to borrow the hard work that we did a little bit earlier. Go ahead and I'll paste that in right here. And again, some of this we're not going to need. I'll go ahead and get rid of this because I don't need it. Get rid of this because we don't need it. We already have this information. We already have this information. Let's get all that out of there. Get that out of there. And let's go ahead and go all the way through. Get rid of this one. We don't need that one. We don't need to add the ship. That would be a nightmare. Please don't do that. And now we are pretty much ready to go with our little code here. And you're saying, wow, that was a lot simpler than it should have been. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to say for each item inside of our I pairs right here, we're basically going to say, I'll go ahead and randomly generate numbers again, check the depth. But this time, instead of creating the unit, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move the units. That's going to be the big difference here. So to do that, I'm simply going to type in send edit, and we're going to say set units. So I'm going to grab myself a little squiggly things. We're going to say our side, which is neutral. We're going to say the uh, unit name you can do. You can use GOID. So in my case, I'm going to go ahead and use a name because I'm nice and boring. Unit name equals V. Remember, this is our value, dot name. Oh, man, that's convenient. And now we go ahead and just move it from latitude and longitude. So I can say latitude equals lat random. And I can say longitude equals long random. And that should jitter everybody. So I'm going to copy paste real quick in case of an event of an emergency. And again, if this crashes on me, expect to see a sudden glitch. <laughs> Isn't that so awesome? <laughs> I love that. So every time I run this script now, everybody gets jiggled around, which is awesome because it um, goes ahead and creates things. But you know, it's really, really cool more than anything. It doesn't break our mission. Yes. Oh, man, that works. Sorry, I'm being uh, a lot of sound effects on my end today. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy paste this because I love this. This code works literally perfect. Wow, something that actually worked like I expected it to. That never happens. So I'm going to go ahead and create a uh, scenario started. Scenario start jitter. I love this. Event is repeatable. Uh, and give it a come down here. I will go ahead and make sure that we'll trigger this when the scenario gets started. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. Uh, scenario started. Scenario is loaded. Create. A scenario is loaded. That's my idea of a simple trigger. Scenario is loaded. Boop. Uh, we don't need a condition on this. I could do scenario started as my condition. And we're going to go ahead and create a brand new function here. We're going to do a Lewis script, create new action. I'll call them uh, jitter. Jitter M ships. <laughs> come down here, control V. And that's all I had to do. Now I'll press the OK button. Go ahead and close that. I'm going to go ahead and come down here. I'm going to go Jitter M ships. Boop. Stick that in there like that. So now I have all my uh, scripts ready to go. Press OK. And it should be set to repeatable because it only can mathematically happen one time. So I'm going to go ahead and save my scenario. And I'm going to go ahead and reopen my scenario and see if everything works the way we hoped it will. We'll say on uh, China. Hopefully memorize where all those ships were because now you can see they all got jittered around. Yes, it works. Now, some of you are probably sitting here going, well, that was cool. I like what you did there. That was really, really cool, actually. Um, by the way, did you need it to uh, display itself over here? Uh, no, sorry about that. So as a matter of fact, I go back to my event editor and I go up to my uh, scenario start jitter, edit this one. It does not need to be shown in the log. So I'm gonna go actually shut that off because like I said, we don't need it right now. Close that, I'm gonna save my scenario again. Now you don't have to deal with worrying about creating 9,000 different individual sets of ships here. They're just gonna keep leaving random every single time they run the scenario. And again, they're gonna be fairly effective as far as confusing the element just a little bit. So now you're probably going, uh, well, isn't there a thing inside settings that allows you to track civilians automatically? The answer is yes. So what I would actually recommend doing is going to Vietnam and making them auto track civilians and leaving it off for China. The reason you do this is it forces the Chinese player to actually take the time to identify all those individual ships, which is going to make it significantly more challenging for them. So I'm um, taking a look at the clock. Uh, we're getting pretty close to the end here. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves an aircraft just to demonstrate how messy this really is. Let's grab ourselves a mod. Da, 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 da. I just want a kind of an old school one. A bear, an M2 should be fine for this. Uh, maritime surveillance. Let's go ahead and grab this again. This is for the purposes of demonstration. Let's go ahead and flip on its little handy dandy radar. Actually, what is our weather today? It's pretty rough. Yeah, light rain. Pff, welcome to Vietnam. Go ahead and point it in this direction. I'm going to flip on its radar real fast. And you can see almost instantaneously just how big the nightmare will become 
as far as trying to determine where all these individual ships are and which ones are the ships that we're going to be interested in actually engaging. Now you can see already we have a pretty good nightmares collection of ships here, but unfortunately for us, we have a contact report that has this generic navigation radar in it, meaning the civilian ship is giving itself away as a civilian ship. By the way, in case you couldn't identify where the action group is, you can see very, very clearly that that's going to be an adjustment we're going to have to make a little bit later on to correct this because like I said, it's a little too darn obvious right here that um, that's a group. We need to really spread those ships around to make this more difficult. But what we're going to do instead, and I'll kind of leave ourselves with this. Unfortunately, we're not going to get to test our scenario until next time. Go back to China real quick. I'm going to switch back to a neutral real fast. And I'm going to tell them not to turn their radars on. Otherwise, they're going to give themselves away much, 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 much earlier than I want them to. And they're going to be too easy to identify. And again, not to say that it's an easy problem, but I've just made this problem a thousand times harder because now not only do you have to find these ships, now you're going to have to be able to go, well, wait a minute, these ships don't emit anything. They could be hostile, which is going to really overload the Chinese player in a good way. And I know you're probably sitting there going, that's a good way. Um, yes, it is actually a good way because it's going to slow them down a little bit as they desperately try to identify. Our next problem we'll have to do with this next time is we're going to have to move everybody around and kind of jitter the positions of all the ships to be able to hide inside of the civilian vessels. Again, we're making things interesting for the player here. Other than that, enjoy.